Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today's video is featuring some new products from Altenew and I think it's their Enchanted Winter release. Um, and so I'm using some older sentiment studs, um, the Mega, Mega, wow Kelly, Mega Label Love. And then I think the other one's like Mega Greetings. But the two that we're here to talk about are these 3D embossing folders. So one of them is the Poinsettia Cluster, and that's the card that we're working on now. And then the other one is the, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation, but I even researched it, guys, I tried so hard, uh, is the Buried Catoniaster, I think is correct. We'll talk about that in a minute. Let's talk about what I'm doing in the card. So... This is a 3D embossing folder. It's a beautiful image, great, great detail. Um, and I had done a uh, card for the last Altenew hop I was in, but I didn't do a video for it. And I colored with alcohol markers, I colored the image. And um, somebody was like, I can't wait to watch the video. And I was like, but there's not one. <laughs> so I knew that I was going to want to do that again and then um, come up with an easier way. Here I wanted to show you. So I've put down some um, Distress Ink, just one layer. I have lightly misted it with some water. Distress Ink does react with water. I know that, but I know I'm going to be putting multiple more layers over it. So I'm not worried about it. On my folder, you can probably see the shadow of this hello. That was another technique that I tried um, before I committed to this one, and I was eventually able to get it off. I had tried a couple of different um, cleaners and ways to get it off, and I just could not previous to the video. Um, since then, I used Hero Arts um, Ultra Clean Spray, and I let it kind of sit on there, and I was able to clean it off. But you can see here in the background that some of that black ink did transfer for a little bit to my poinsettias, but by the time I'm done inking it, you can't see it. Um, so that's just something to make note of. If you use your embossing folders in a way that you transfer ink to them and you don't clean it up, you may transfer it to your next embossing, um, like the next paper you're embossing on. So um, I put down abandoned coral and then I went back in with a little bit of candied apple. Here, these are Altenew's detailed shading brushes. Um, and I am using that to add mustard seed to the center of my poinsettias. Uh, worked really well. The brushes are really soft. They pick up a good amount of ink. I This is the first time I've used them and I was pretty happy with them. So now I'm back to this uh, candied apple and I am just kind of putting on um, as much ink as I feel is necessary to make them the shade that I want. Uh, so you can stop at any point, whenever you're happy. Um, I just really wanted them to be like red, red. And in order to get some dimension, um, there's two different ways that you can do this. And one is more subtle. That's what I'm doing here. And I'm going in with the, um, this is aged mahogany um, and the uh, ink blending tool. And I'm just kind of rubbing it back and forth on the raised areas to get a little bit more dimension. The other way you can do it is taking your ink pad directly to your paper. And that is what I end up doing. So first I'm going to do it with this fossilized amber on the just the centers and you can see that it just hits the top not in like the inside of the grooves and then I'm going to go back in with that aged mahogany and do the same thing over the petals um I was much happier with that look I felt like it gave it a lot more dimension and then um, I did go back in and kind of just blend it out a little bit so it wasn't like this crazy dark spots and I didn't have any issues with doing that. The reason I didn't cover this whole piece is because my intention is to cut it out. Would I do this with other embossing folders? Yes, if they were large images. Um, I think that you don't have to be kind of married to leaving them on the paper you embossed them on as long as you don't have to go in. I mean, I guess you could even do it with a lot of detailed cutting. I'm just not willing to. Uh, and I am a fussy cutter. Um, I, I don't mind fussy cutting, but I just feel like it would be so difficult to kind of maintain all of that detail in a small intricate image um, like the other one that we're using today, the buried 
could Tony Astor, I'm still not committed. I know that that's what most people said that it was when I did my Googling, um, but I am 100%, I do not know what that word is. I don't know, y'all, and I tried so hard. There's like a British version, an American version, a whatever, ver like there's a bunch of different options for pronunciation. Um, tomato, tomato, this is the one that I went with. This is the one I committed to. So now that I have this trimmed out, just like anything else I would fussy cut, I am going to go back in um, and I just found a quick red that I grabbed to go around the edges um, just so that they wouldn't be white because I knew that I was going to be putting this on a darker card base. Um, so this is the quick, easy, simple way to add a lot of color to your image and get very pretty results. This is less quick and simple, but still very pretty. So when you're doing your 3D embossing, you always want to spritz your paper first. And I've seen other crafters just take a damp baby wipe and kind of wipe the paper down with it. And I found that that did not provide enough moisture for me. And so that's why I switched to the spritzing. Um, it doesn't change the shape of your card stock at all. Like I'm still using my regular Nina 80 pound and I didn't have any issues. With this one, I did want the image to be just a little higher up on my card. So I left a smidge of card stock hanging out and you're going to see that it did leave a little bit of a line. Um, I... I have a trick, I guess. I guess it wouldn't be like, I didn't fix it. I illusioned it away. <laughs> That's what I did with it. I I did some other things so that it wasn't so noticeable and I'm fine with it. So for this one's background, I'm not going to get into all of the little pieces parts. This one's going to have a little bit of a halo. Um, I chose to do the blue background. Blue's my boyfriend. You know, I love blue. Um, but also because I knew the image was going to be a red and green and blue plays really nicely with that. And I like for my cards to be matchy matchy. And I had already committed to a navy background for my poinsettias. So that's how we picked this. So I just went in. This is a different uh, detailed blending brush, but it's still included in that same set. And I just went in and kind of got into those smaller areas. Again, worked really well. Um, I did kind of tap it off on my work surface first before I went in, uh, but didn't really have any issues blending. And then I'm going to move out to make this a little bit darker. Ultimately, I used Salty Ocean, Prize Ribbon, and Uncharted Mariner. I wanted to call it nautical something, but I guess that makes sense because it's Uncharted Mariner, but it's not nautical anything. It's Uncharted Mariner. Anywho, uh, those are the ones I use. <laughs> those are the ones I use. As I'm going back through, um, you guys know that I like to go lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest with my alcohol markers. I like to do the same thing with my ink blending because I feel like it gives me a much more saturated color and a much better blend. And um, you're going to see that as I'm going through with my second set of colors, I'm less um, careful about how close I'm getting to my images and this is because I felt like my halo was too big. I was confident in my ability with my colors to kind of mask any of the blue that got on the berries or the leaves. Uh, so I just decided that I was going to go ahead and go for it to get a, a little bit closer to um, how I wanted the background to look. Uh, and it's especially true for the salty ocean because it is like right up against there. Um, this is the one that is the majority of the color that got into um, where I guess it shouldn't be. Um, yeah, so then after I did this, uh, this is going to be um, the tricking of the eye and sparkles is next. So here, this is that uh, white piece I just cut um, 
first of all, I want to, I used it as my practice piece to see how I would like the way that it cut. And then um, now I'm using it as a mask so that I can get my placement right for my spatters. This is just gold perfect pearls. I did have a little bit of an issue. Apparently I didn't seal it correctly the last time I used it. And so there was some uh, perfect pigment uh, powder that was on the side of the rim. So I was just knocking that off. This paintbrush that I am using is actually um, from Altenew as well. It is part of their uh, detailed paintbrushes um, or watercolor brushes. And um, again, like this one pretty decently as well. It, it works very well. Um, so here I'm doing some gold splatters. You can see on the... Um, piece that we did the blue light blue ink blending. I've done some purposeful spots that I kind of hand painted in down at the bottom and that's part of how we're masking that line that was created. I also used this um I had already cleaned it up and I was like wow this would look really pretty on the centers and so I had a little bit of spout powder that had spilled so I just used that um <laughs> and it worked uh just fine so super pretty shimmery gold in the centers and then I'm gonna move on to the coloring right now this card kind of looks like a hot mess I am using the Altenew artist markers I believe I am using a combination in this one of a one from set A, one from set B, and the other ones are all from C. Um, you can see on their website all of the colors that come together, um, if there's any questions about that. But it, set A has a reds family and set C has a reds family. Either one of them would have worked. I just kind of like to mix and match my own. Some tips and tricks about alcohol coloring, like alcohol marker coloring on 3D embossed images. First of all, very cool. It's very, very cool. I'm not going to pretend like it's not because it's a raised image. Um, like you already have this dimension there and then laying the color over it gives it another added layer of dimension. So really kind of enjoy the way that the, um, like the results that I'm getting from this. You do have to be careful because there is no barrier between the paper. Do you know what I'm saying? So like there's no barrier between one berry and the berry that's next to it. So if you're putting in your darker color and you brush up against the berry next to it, that, that paper is still going to absorb the ink. So if you're coloring like the side of a leaf and it's right up against the petal of a flower. You have to be really aware of what portion of the paper you're touching so that you're not bleeding green ink into the petal of your flower or vice versa. Um, so it did take me a minute to kind of get comfortable with what I was doing and how this medium was working with the paper in this way. Uh, it didn't take too terribly long. It just kind of took me a second. Um, I will say that I, it's not as clean, I guess. Like there's no bold black outline that's kind of going to save my edges. I'm going to have to kind of smooth those out myself, um, which is relatively quick to do because you already have the shape of the image embossed. You're coloring on top of that. I did try a couple of different things with these 3D embossing folders before I committed to what I was doing um, because I think they are very, very cool. And embossing folders have always been something that has a pretty approachable price point, um, which I like. I like something that's going to last me a long time that I do not have to put forth a lot of money for. And I think everybody does. <laughs> I think everybody does. And so these new 3D embossing folders are really kind of like, they're like embossing to the extra because they're so detailed and you have to do such minimal things to make them look super cool because they pretty much do it on their own. Um, so I tried colored pencils and colored pencils just didn't work for me. 
And I think the reason is because colored pencils require a little bit of pressure to, you know, you have your light, medium, uh, heavy pressure in order to get the shading that you want. And because this, these images are popped up, um, it kind of pushes the embossing back down, uh, which I really did not care for. So I may try it again and we'll see if maybe I can find a way to use that medium. I did try watercolor with them um, and I just didn't, I don't know, maybe that one we'll revisit too. I just wasn't super impressed, but I also love my markers. Um, so that's just something to consider. The, I think the ink blending is by far and away the easiest, fastest, and one of the more approachable ways to get a really beautiful image with like not a lot of effort at all, um, which most of us really like. You know, you really like that. Sometimes you don't have time to do a whole lot and you need something quick, especially if you were going to like mass produce your own Christmas cards. Um, definitely something that would be achievable with a 3D embossing folder. Um, so super, super kind of excited to have those out there and be, they are trendy, but I do think that they're, um, you know, embossing folders have been around for a really long time. This is just a totally different take on them and a better one, honestly, <laughs> a much, much better one. Um, because before it wasn't even so much the images, like you might have one or two companies that were releasing images, but it was really like background patterns. And now you have a mix of the two where you have the backgrounds and these super beautiful images, which I totally adore. Um, so as far as the coloring, I did the same thing I usually do. Light is to dark, dark is to light. Uh, and that didn't really change. It's just kind of this no line coloring look. But when you hold the card in your hand, you can feel it, which is just, I don't know. I, it's like a little bit of magic, I think. So I'm not going to show you, there's a lot of leaves here. I'm not going to show you the entirety of the leaves, but I did want to point out that like these little stems that the berries are coming off of, um, the Alta New Artist markers, I almost never use this side for anything really because I like the brush nib, but on the other side, it has a bullet nib and how handy for this type of coloring because those little stems were so narrow. I was very nervous about, like I said, bumping into something that it didn't belong, but that little bullet nib was like a lifesaver. Um, so yeah, great for getting in those little tiny nooks and crannies that maybe the brush tip marker, it might make it really tricky. Those little bullet nibs totally worked for this really, really well. Um, so yeah, I know somebody had said on one of my videos like two weeks ago and they were like, I'm not ready for Christmas yet, girl. Like I almost didn't watch your video because it was Christmas. Like same, same, same. Today was the first day of fall and Ohio was feeling it. Like yesterday was 85, today 60 something. Like it did not even, it was as soon as <laughs> the calendar was like, it's fall here. It was fall. <laughs> um, so I am not ready for Christmas yet either. I'm totally not. I'm still trying to work out what my kids are going to be for Halloween. And then I got Caitlin's birthday coming up. Like there's a lot going on. But if you have ever worked, not even, you don't even have to work in retail if you are a consumer who goes to the store, you know, like, people have had their Christmas items up for, like, a month already now. For real. Like, they started selling fall stuff back in, like, July. And because if you want to be able to have consumers use it within the holiday season, you have to release it you know, two or three months before the season. Otherwise, they're not going to be able to use it this season. They'll be able to use it for like two weeks at Christmas time and that's it. So that is why all these companies release them so early and you see all of us card makers like 
Christmas in July, literally, um, because we that's when they're being released so that you will be able to purchase them and then have them to use for this year's Christmas card or, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, as far as being ready for Christmas, no. And I guarantee you, I love, it's not the holiday. I'm not referring to the actual holiday when I say this because I adore Christmas. It is the birthday of my Lord and Savior. I love celebrating Christmas. I love celebrating Christmas with my kids and decorating for it and spending time with my family and all of that. Um, but I will be sick of Christmas, I bet, before you guys are. <laughs> because it's just all the time. And then I have this crazy husband. I think we had a conversation about this last year. And actually, this is kind of... I normally don't always share um, like the mean comments people leave or the off the wall comments people leave because I don't want it to appear as like I'm picking on someone or I'm, I'm making fun of them in any way. But like there are sometimes some comments just totally catch me off guard. And I remember sharing with you guys last year that Eric, my husband, uh, at the first snowfall always plays, um, all I want for Christmas is you by Mariah Carey. And we all have to suffer through it. And there was a, a person who left a message, <laughs> who left me a comment on that video and said, um, well, I bet Mariah is a nice person unlike you. And I was like, uh, oh, I didn't know me not liking that one song by her made me a mean person, but apparently it does. <laughs> and I was unaware. Um, I mean, I can do a little fantasy. You'll always be my baby. I can do some Mariah like that. I don't want to do some Mariah at Christmas. I am not interested. No, thank you. I'm like a Brenda Lee rocking around the Christmas tree type Christmas music. Uh, that's me because I'm, that's what I grew up with and that's what I enjoy. But anywho, um, so I have to listen to the Christmas music all the time while he is around because he just listens from the first snowfall, Christmas music is on. Um, and it's a lot. So now that the coloring is done, I am going to go in with my white gel pen. I just added some little like um, half moon, little C-shaped highlights on my berries to make them look a little bit more realistic. Was very happy with the way that that came out. And then the next thing I did with my white gel pen, some of you guys are going to think that's a little bit wonky, but I feel like it really kind of brought out the detail. And this is, I did not really add any pressure to this. I kind of just put the pen in the groove that was created from the embossing and just drug it along. So it's not a perfect white line. It's not necessarily big and bold in all the areas. It's sketchy in some other ones. But I did this through all of the veins in the poinsettia just to kind of make that detail pop and was very happy with the way that it looked. If you aren't, it's cool. Don't do that. Just leave it the way it was with the distress ink. So... I've picked out a couple of sentiments here and I thought that I was going to do um, like the main sentiment and then a sub sentiment with each one in gold uh, to kind of tie in that perfect pearls vibe we had going on. Um, but I didn't. I liked the sub sentiment with the hello. I did not like it with the thanks. It was just too large, I think. Um, but anywho, I treated this with my embossing bag. I am stamping in Alta News Antique Gold. Um, and the first time I stamped, the top one came out great. The second one, I didn't get enough pressure, but rather than risk messing up the first one, I just took it out and then closed my misty door again, and I was able to get a good impression. Um, I will also be using their antique gold embossing powder, um, and I will just be sprinkling that on. Some of you might be asking, if you stamped it in gold, why are you embossing in gold? Um, it's the same gold, and you are correct, it is the same gold. I could clear emboss over the ink uh, and still get a beautiful gold, um, but 
they are pigment inks. They stay wet for a really long time if you don't emboss them or heat set them. And so for me, it's just easier to do the embossing. It gives me a really beautiful shine. You guys know I think uh, heat embossing is kind of magical. Um, and so I was happy with that. I like to leave my mistakes in. You guys know that. So I was melting this. Here in one second, you're going to see that I bump my embossing with my heat gun and I remove a portion of that gold. Here's how I fixed it. I went in with my fingertip. I put my fingertip into the gold ink pad. I dabbed it on top of the spot that was missing it. And now I am going to dump more embossing powder over top of it to make sure that my edge is still nice and clean. I'm going to go in with a clean paintbrush um, and just kind of clean that up. Embossing powder, once it is a melting and it's kind of in that liquidy state, it will just go back together. Like you won't be able to tell that I messed up that spot. It'll just melt back and be smooth and not have any issues. So I've never, I don't recall ever having like gotten my gun so close that I actually touched what I was trying to emboss, but there's a, there's a time and a season for everything. So now I've decided that I don't like that longer sentiment with the thanks. I'm just going to use the label. I've trimmed these all out um, and I am going to pop them up on foam. Altenew actually has their own foam tape. I did not know that. This is a first to me. Um, and as with all of their products, it has absolutely beautiful packaging. Uh, it's a good foam tape. It's a little softer than like my regular scotch foam tape, like it's a little squishier. So I think that maybe might mail better, you know, because it would kind of be easier to compress down and then spring back up. Um, but anyway, so that worked very well. I am using liquid adhesive to glue down my uh, poinsettia panels. Oh, that was the other thing I forgot to mention with these 3D embossing folders. You can use either side. So you can use it popped up or you can use it debossed. It's amazing. Super, super cool. Um, and I'm just gluing that down to the navy cardstock that we prepared with the gold splatters. And again, I will be popping up my sentiments on foam. Um, and this one just says a warm hello, which I thought was kind of fitting. I didn't want to use Christmas, Christmas sentiments for these. Um, I just wanted to keep them nice and neutral for like the holiday season. The last thing that I did was I added just some clear glitter to the um, berries uh, that I colored with the um, alcohol markers, and then that was it. So these are both cards. Uh, oh, it's part of a blog hop too. I should have mentioned that earlier. If there's a chance to win through September 28th, I'll link the blog below. My bad. I apologize. Um, but yeah, anywho, these are both cards. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're inspired to try something you've seen here, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye.